Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. More than three months after a loved one is murdered, a San Antonio family is praying for answers. I don't understand how somebody could do something like this. You know, there's no reason why this is, this is horrible. It's completely evil. What the family is asking the suspect in this case to do this morning and the reward being offered for an arrest. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. And Taylor Swift fans have a big problem with Ticketmaster. We are not going to just settle. We, we want to see some change happen. We want to see a difference being made. Just ahead, how the president of the Live Nation is responding to accusations of fraud. And outside with Live Cam this morning, we've got more humidity. We've got some light drizzle here or there. Mike says we have another interesting week in the forecast, including a storm or two, then cooler, then warmer, and then it's all a big April Fool's joke. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, March 27th. That's one way to describe it. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, at least the weekend was beautiful. It was. It was absolutely beautiful. We had some clouds off and on throughout the weekend, but overall sunshine reigned supreme, and Mike Ostrage is here, and good morning to you. Good morning, but yesterday, of course, the humidity came back in. Saturday is okay. really, really nice. It and was then... perfect, but even the humidity wasn't too bad. Yesterday. Yeah, it, it got better in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now, Actually, jumping ahead to April Fool's Day, no fooling with that. Beautiful weather coming up here. But yes, we'll be up and down and left and right. Did you see mist this morning? Yes, sir. A little bit, yes. Little Almost bit. the entire way in. Okay, but I, the, I, mine was like just, it was like, is that misting? I mean, it was so fine on the windshield. They didn't even have to use the wipers at all. But you may get something a little bit heavier than that because the humidity just keeps getting pumped back in here. I uh, can't tell if 410 is damp out there. It looks like there's a bit of a sheen on the road. Visibility, we're also starting to see some fog. Half mile now, Port SA, three stints in quarter, three quarters at Pleasanton. Uh, fog around Gonzales, not bad at the airport yet, but as is always the case, it's going to get worse. It's going to get thicker before it uh, thins on out. A lot more fog off to the east this morning. Uh, Beeville, LaGrange, and as I mentioned, Gonzales, Victoria, down to two and a half miles right now. Temperatures are very warm. We're down to 69 degrees right now. We do have a wind coming in here out of the northeast. That's trying to pull in a little bit drier air temporarily this morning. Then the humidity is going to come back up. Then it will be dropping down. I mean, it's kind of all over the place here as far as all that is concerned. Allergens. Oak really went up yesterday. Mold went up as well. Then the rest of the grocery list of uh, allergens out there throughout the rest of the morning, 68 degrees. So We'll have a little bit of fog, that northeasterly breeze. Hopefully that kind of prevents a lot of the thicker, thicker fog from forming up. But obviously you, you saw there around Port SA, it's already dropped down to a half mile visibility. And then later on this afternoon, we make it up to 80. Most of the cloudy skies, a little sunshine thrown in and northeasterly wind. However, the humidity is going to try and creep back in here. Then we get the real big push of a northeasterly breeze along with a cool front moving through here. That may touch off a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Matter of fact, Storm Prediction Center has a very small chance in our extreme eastern counties. This would be late, late tonight. We'll talk about that. Cool midweek, then back to the warm and any fooling for April Fools. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. Folks on Transguide this morning, you may already see the take off the alternate route notes. Uh, the lower level of I-10 west at Culebra remains closed and has been for quite some time now due to a major accident. The eastbound lanes are not affected, but again, lower level of 10 just before Culebra heading out of downtown remains closed as of right now. And this morning, a family is searching for answers more than three months after their loved one was killed. According to San Antonio Police, 27-year-old Rain Rice was in a car around 7.45 p.m. on I-10 West before the upper and lower level split near downtown December 17th when someone shot her. These are photos of the suspect's vehicle. The dark SUV was seen driving west on Cesar Chavez Boulevard at South Flores Street behind a white Hummer limo before the shooting. Her family is asking for whoever did this to think of her kids and give them the closure they deserve. They can imagine what it would feel like to them. You know, uh, if you had a sister, you had a, a daughter and somebody came and took them away, how would you feel about it? So mm -hmm. do the right thing and come forward. Rice's family says there is a $5,000 reward for information on her murder. If you know anything, you're asked to give Crime Stoppers a call and you can remain anonymous.
Music fans are ready to see Ticketmaster face the music in federal court, answering a lawsuit over accusations of fraud and price fixing. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, Taylor Swift fans attended a dance party last night ahead of their first court hearing today. It's me. This morning, Taylor Swift fans have a big problem with Ticketmaster. A group filing a lawsuit in court today claiming a conspiracy to jack up prices for Swift's Eras Tour. We are not going to just settle. We, we want to see some change happen. We want to see a difference being made. Ticketmaster's parent company, Live Nation, saying earlier this year. We apologize to Ms. Swift. We need to do better and we will do better. But that's not all. I know when that hotline bling. Drake fans filing a separate lawsuit you know. against Ticketmaster in Canada for alleged price fixing there, claiming the company knew the Canadian artist would perform two concerts in Montreal, but kept that quiet to boost demand. Experts say the underlying problem, Ticketmaster's monopoly on the market, controlling 70% of the industry. The monopoly issues have been going on for years and years and years and years. Pearl Jam took them before Congress. That was in 1994. Pearl Jam members on Capitol Hill after finding out Ticketmaster added a service charge to its tickets. Many Pearl Jam fans are teenagers who do not have the money to pay $30 or more that it's often charged for tickets today. Pearl Jam complained, tried to get promoters to cap ticket prices at other venues with no luck. There's no one who even comes close to Ticketmaster's strength, its reach, its muscle, its ability to sell the volume of tickets that it has to. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Two human smuggling cases under investigation here in South Texas in just two days. The latest one happening over in Eagle Pass. Twelve people were trapped inside a rail car. One of those migrants is dead. The migrants were found Saturday afternoon when Eagle Pass Fire and Maverick County Sheriff's deputies were called to the Union Pacific train yard. Officials say one of the migrants inside the rail car had called 911 saying they were trapped inside for more than 24 hours. Three migrants were taken to a nearby hospital. Eight others were detained by Border Patrol. This is the second migrant investigation involving a Union Pacific rail car. On Friday, as many of you may know, 17 migrants are found near Canipa, not far from Uvalde. Homeland Security investigators are looking into both those cases. Overseas chaos has erupted in Israel, a crucial U.S. ally in the Middle East. The White House said overnight that it is, quote, deeply concerned. Some are calling this Israel's January 6th moment. Protesters are outraged over a plan to change the court system, giving Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu more power. The Attorney General said it violates the law, and now key members of the government and the military are turning against Netanyahu. But Netanyahu is holding firm, tweeting, claiming members of the judiciary are elitist and don't represent the Israeli people. Back here in the U.S., people in the city of Brotherly Love can wash down their cheesesteaks today with a glass of water for now. Despite a chemical spill over the weekend, Philadelphia officials say the water in the area is not contaminated. The Coast Guard said in a statement last night it's collected 60,000 gallons of contaminated water, adding there's been no report of any wildlife affected by the spill. City officials say there's enough safe tap water to, uh, until at least midnight and that the risk of possible contamination gets smaller as time passes. Right now, 438, 69 degrees. And last night, it started off good for the San Antonio Spurs against the Boston Celtics. Uh, you know, we, we played well for about a quarter, but after that, I thought we just gave in. You know, last game on the road, end of season, I thought we uh, embarrassed ourselves by giving in the way we did. Coming up next, why Coach Pop thinks the team just threw in the towel too soon. And outside with live cam, yeah, mist and a drizzle in some spots. And the road is also wet in a few spots this morning. Uh, we're going to be on the lookout for a storm or two in the next 12 to 24 hours. Mike will talk more about that coming up a little bit later on in this half hour. San Antonio Spurs wrapping up their four-game road trip last night without Keldon Johnson and Jeremy Sohan. Celtics were down their star. Jason Tatum out with a left hip contusion. First quarter, former Spur Derek White puts Boston up three with that basket. 9-0 Celtics run. Zach Collins led the Spurs with nine points in the first quarter. Spurs were up 32-30 after one. However, Boston led 68-58 at the break. Third quarter, Trey Jones. And Malachi Branham, the only Spurs making buckets after halftime, each had two in the first six minutes of actions. Then it's Sandru Mamu coming right at you with two layups. One, everyone is just getting out of his way. 
and then he gets fouled on the third drive to the basket. He had 11 after three and the Celtics led by 19 going into the fourth quarter. And that's when the Celtics take off. Jalen Brown puts the Celtics up by 30 and they would lead by 47. Brown had 41 last night. Spurs lose all four games on their four game road trip. So here's the final Spurs uh, lose it. And that is 137 to 93. Boston gets the win after the game. Pop made one statement that went back to the locker room. Uh, you know, we, we played well for about a quarter, but after that, I thought we just gave in, you know, last game on the road, end of season. I thought we uh, embarrassed ourselves by giving in the way we did, but the you know, Celtics had a lot to do with that. You know, you lose by 40. You know, there's there's probably a lot of things that went wrong, so we got we to gotta learn from that because we should never lose a game like that. Next Spurs back in town Wednesday to welcome the Utah Jazz. Team leaves again for Friday night at Golden State. Sunday, the team takes on the Kings in Sacramento. University of Texas fell to Miami in the Elite Eight part of the NCAA tournament last night. Meanwhile, this marks the first time in tournament history that none of the number ones make the final four. Here are the matchups. Number nine, Florida Atlantic will face a number five, San Diego State, Saturday of 509. After that, the five and four matchup between Miami and UConn will tip at 749. Both games will be played at NRG Stadium in Houston. Back to back games for the San Antonio Brahmas of the XFL with the Arlington Renegades this time on the road. Second quarter, three nothing San Antonio. Drew Plitt sacked, ball knocked loose by Delonte Scott, picked up by Jordan Williams, runs it 45 yards for the San Antonio touchdown. The two point conversion is no good, but SA is up nine nothing at the half. Third quarter after San Antonio has picked off Plitt fires to Lou Han Winningham. Makes a touch catch for the 16 yard TD. Extra point, no good. Now we're tied at nine. Fourth quarter after two San Antonio view goals, Arlington made a drive with less than a minute to play. The pass is picked off by Tenny Ottawa to secure the victory. And here is your final score. San Antonio gets another win this season. They beat Arlington 15 to nine. San Antonio is now two and four. Next, the Brahmas take on the Vipers in Las Vegas. The game is set for kickoff Saturday at 2 p.m. After the coach, head coach, after the game rather, Heinz Ward talked about the week the team went through. Awesome job by the Brahmas. Yeah, we, yeah. and it was a, I'm sure it was a week <laughs> full of soul searching, yes. but they got their second win of the season. That's all that counts. That's good news. Time now, 445 and 69 degrees for now. It's a money saving trend gaining momentum across the country. Up next, how the buy nothing movement works and how it can help you and your neighbors. Let's look out there with TransGuide. Still looking at the situation there over I-10 westbound. There is an accident. Crews are still out there working. Those lanes are blocked off. People are being diverted off of this direction. I saw this on TransGuide when it came in at 3.30 this morning. So I don't know what time the call came out, but it's still there. So we don't know when it's going to be cleared. Looks like wreckers could be on the scene, but we'll keep you posted. Yes. And Who has a bracket that still? You know, oh, <laughs> no one. No one on the planet. No. I mean, it's like, I, in our group here. I think there's 30 people. I was in like fourth place over the weekend, and I didn't win hardly. It's like nobody, yeah. you know. And then with Texas gone now, so anyway. Yep. I say San Diego State. I think they're going to take it. So I, I know. I, did, I know you're not. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I didn't. Fans, I didn't follow it this year. I'm no. a huge fan, but it's over for me now. It was over yesterday. It's just like, going to oh, be fun to see who wins. Done. That's what's great about March Madness. Sure. All right, take a look outside in this good, beautiful, beautiful picture. God is such an incredible artist. It says, as you can just imagine, what heaven must look like. That is a gorgeous shot there. Thank you very much for that. Yes, it was a beautiful weekend. We had plenty of sunshine yesterday. A little more humidity, especially in the morning. And now, as you can see, 410 appears to be a little on the damp side. There is some extremely fine mist out there. Maybe in your neighborhood, it's a little heavier, kind of drizzle. Nothing being picked up on radar right now. Mile and a half visibility, Pleasanton. Three stints in three port. I say that actually improved just in the past about 15 minutes. Mile and a half over there at Gonzales. A lot of fog down along the coastal plain. Beeville at a quarter mile right now. Some up around New Braunfels as well, heading out west in toward Hondo. We'll be on the lookout over the next couple of hours. 69 degrees here in town, mid-upper 60s, low 70s. And we are anywhere from 
uh, 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Drier air in the uh, hill country, although it did go up. We've gone up 23 degrees just since this time yesterday as far as the humidity is concerned. Now it is going to drop slightly and then come back up and then drop again. So you, you kind of need a program to follow what's going on. Here's what uh, is going on with temperatures. 10% chance for that little bit of mist and drizzle out there. We'll stay steady, drop a few degrees in the next couple of hours, then come back up to the mid 70s today at noon. Plenty of clouds hanging around here. Some sunshine later on today and we'll top off at 80. And then the wind will start to it's out of the northeast and then it's going to really start to pick up overnight as the front moves on through. So a couple little sprinkly showers around here or the mist or drizzle. That's about it. It's not going to amount to too awfully much. Plenty of clouds all the way through uh, the late morning hours. Then we are going to have a bit of a break. Not much. Now, as we go on into tonight, there will be some showers and a couple of thunderstorms developing, especially off to the east. And that's where some of those may be strong to potentially severe. And there will be a few leftovers tomorrow morning as well. Storm Prediction Center does have that uh, chance for a couple of isolated stronger storms well off to the east later on. This would be late, late tonight, maybe even in the uh, overnight hours. Very few and far between. Then in behind that, the front moves on through and that's going to uh, clear us out quite nicely as far as the humidity. Cloud cover still be a little bit iffy. 76 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature today makes it up to 80 with, again, plenty of clouds, some sunshine out there. Humidity, if there's a little drop this morning, is going to come back up. Then the front moves on through. Now, it's going to be windy tomorrow, 70 for a high temperature. So we will be noticeably cooler tomorrow. And that little bit of leftover rain in the morning, I think some sunshine in the afternoon. 56 down to almost normal Wednesday, and we stay only at 67. Seven degrees warm back up here and then another front comes on through not necessarily cooler but it will get rid of the humidity just in time for april fool's day and any other celebrations this coming saturday steph As inflation continues to send prices of everyday items soaring, more shoppers are turning to buy nothing groups. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's a money-saving trend gaining momentum across the country. Welcome to the Buy Nothing movement. For Jenna Orndorff, it started with a fire. I lost everything. My apartment was condemned. I was displaced and basically had to start over. So she turned to the local Buy Nothing group on Facebook and surprisingly found a lot. Husband and wife brought this 60 inch TV to my new apartment. When we started the very first group, I was literally getting food and clothing that I could not afford otherwise. So I knew how um, impactful those gifts were for me. And I knew that I wasn't the only person in that position. And coming up at 7 a.m., if you want to take part in the Buy Nothing movement, we have the expert tips you need to succeed. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. 453, 69 degrees. Great news if you're a big Adele fan. Up next, we're going to tell you how many shows she's adding to her Vegas residency and how you can see if you can't make it to Sin City. 456, it was a big weekend for John Wick at the box office. Plus, you now have more time to see Adele in Las Vegas. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Matt Wolf. John Wick just crushing the box office with John Wick Chapter 4, pulling in just over $73 million in theaters this past weekend. A man has to look his best when it's time to get married. Or buried. That's a record for the action franchise led by Keanu Reeves, which has seen ticket sales increase with each consecutive John Wick release. The wizard gave me superpowers. Shazam! Meanwhile, Shazam! Fury of the Gods notching down to second place, the superhero sequel pulling in just $9.7 million. That's a 69% drop since opening last weekend. Scream 6 rounds things out, pulling in just over $8 million, adding to its solid gross of almost $90 million. All right, y'all, so it is officially timed. Kelly Clarkson's got a new album coming out soon, and we have a name. It'll be called Chemistry. Clarkson making the announcement Sunday on her Instagram, and she says the first single will be out really soon. Clarkson also says she's been working on the project for almost three years, and she's nervous and excited about the release. Go 
Adele is staying on the strip a little bit longer. She announced her weekends with Adele residency at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas is adding an additional 34 shows. That'll start in June, running through November. A live concert film of the residency is also in the works. And happy birthday, Mariah Carey. She's 54 Monday. Matt Wolf, ABC News. Now 457, 69 degrees. After his visit to Texas, former President Trump is continuing his 2024 campaign for president. Up next, what's next for the grand jury weighing charges against Trump, who is accused of giving a hush payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. A person found dead on a sidewalk on San Antonio's west side. Just ahead, what a neighbor says about a car with bullet holes that ended up right in front of her home. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over at that accident at I-10. This is westbound around Calebra. Stephen Cavazos is tracking that. He's in the studio, so we'll be checking in with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A grand jury considering charges against former President Trump is expected to hear from new witnesses today. Coming up, Trump had a lot to say about it on the campaign trail this weekend. We'll have the latest. Let's look out there with live cams starting kind of humid again, 69 degrees and at least for me and Mark, a little mist on the way to work. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 27th. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. The weather, you know, worked out for the most part. Got a little warm yesterday, I think. Let's talk about the week ahead and lots of changes again throughout the week. Kind of a mix of a mixed bag of goods, Mike. Yeah, we've got the humidity, which came back in here this morning, leading to some of that, that mist out there. I walked outside uh, this morning and was like, is that mist? And then on the windshield, didn't even have to use the wipers. It was so fine, but it may be a little bit more than just mist. It could be a little bit of drizzle out there as well. Plus, we got to watch out for some fog. 69 degrees out there at the airport. And notice that bottom number, that dew point is up to 66. So the humidity has been coming back in here. And as it just continues to get pumped back on in, it's almost like the atmosphere can't hold anymore. So that's why we see some of that, that mist out there. We are going to make it up to 80 later on today, different than yesterday's mid 80s, thanks to the cloud cover out there. The aquifer went up one tenth of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens got a whole grocery list out there leading the way. Oak is on the high side. Mold is also high. Little bits of everything else out there. We do have some fog to deal with this morning and really depends on where you are. Now, two and three quarter mile visibility out there at Port S.A. It was down to a half mile just about a half an hour ago. Four mile Stinson, mile and three quarters there at Pleasanton. Gonzalez has also gotten a little bit thicker and more fog along the coastal plain this morning as opposed to out to the west, but just a uh, little hints of it here and there, and we'll have to watch out for the next couple of hours, obviously, as is always the case. Mid upper 60s, low 70s, so we are, uh, say, 10, 15 degrees above normal right now. And these dew points, now notice how it is uh, a little more comfortable out there in portions of the hill country. Some of this drier air is going to try and push on in here temporarily. Then the humidity comes back in this afternoon. Then it's going to go away with the front moving on through here. So a little bit of mist around here, then mostly cloudy 80 high temperature later on this afternoon. Front's going to move through late tonight. A couple of showers and thunderstorms, and some of those could be on the strong, potentially severe side, mainly off to the east. Then in behind the front, it is going to be windy, a morning shower, and then cooler temperatures. So we'll go from 80 today down to 70. Cooler still on Wednesday, then we warm back up. Over the week, there's going to be a chance for a shower here or there. Nothing just really kind of pinpoint on just that small chance. And then we get some drier air coming in here just in time for the start of April this weekend. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. Got some problems out there, right? Yeah, unfortunately, Mike, we are starting our Monday morning off with big issues out on the roadway. We're going to first start here at I-10 East at Loop 410. Uh, right now, Texas has reported an incident in the area, and you can see at the moment we do have first responders out there, so hopefully the situation will be cleared in just a moment. You can also see that tow truck, so watch out. It has been a very busy morning. One of the big talking points that we mentioned earlier was right here. This crash along I-10 westbound at that lower level near Culebra Road. Uh, in fact, as I was driving into work, that was something that I saw on the lower levels there. So just watch out. It does look like that has already cleared out. So better news to report out there. But as the morning does get rolling in, if you have to travel in the southbound lanes of 37 here, you're going to see a little bit of a buildup. In fact, it does appear a crash may have popped up there. Uh, this is still here in Bear County, just a little bit closer to the Atascos 
Tuscaloosa County line uh, southbound there at Mathis Road is where we see that buildup taking place. I talked to our friends at Transguide. We know that there is an incident that's being reported out there, but unfortunately the cameras are not able to show us the conditions, but we can clearly see that it is uh, getting a little bit busier out there on the roadways this early in the morning. Wide view of the metropolitan area, guys. Thankfully, it's still pretty quiet here in town, but watch out for some of that mist on the roadways. We did mention that a little bit earlier, something I encountered as well. Uh, thankfully here, if you're traveling into San Antonio, there's no delay if you're traveling in from Seguin on I-10 westbound, about 30 minutes to the Alamo City. 87 if you are traveling along those northbound lanes from Lavernia, about 33 minutes and a 28 minute drive time for our friends down as Floresville. But looks like we are seeing some progress here at 10 East at Loop 410. Hopefully we'll have a better update coming up in the next few minutes, but we'll be watching the roads closely throughout the morning. Guys. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a fight led to a stabbing overnight happened just before 10 p.m. in the 700 block of West Mally Boulevard. That's on the south side near Commercial Avenue. Police say two men were involved. They say one of them stabbed the other and took off, so no arrests have been announced. The victim was taken to a hospital. There's no word yet on his condition. This morning, San Antonio police are looking for a suspect on the run. That's after a person was found dead on the sidewalk on the city's west side. Now, when police got there late Saturday night, they found a car parked on the street around Southwest 19th. It was still running and bullet holes were on the passenger side. That car was parked right in front of a neighbor's home. I got scared. I did got scared because you don't know what's going to happen. The name of that victim has not been released. This morning, a man's in the hospital after being hit by a car while crossing a street on the south side. It happened just after 2 p.m. Sunday near Bonner Avenue in South Flores. San Antonio police said the man was not in a crosswalk when he was hit and thrown by a car. He was taken to a hospital. The driver did stop to help and will not be facing any charges. A New York grand jury considering charges against former President Donald Trump is expected to hear new witness testimony today. A decision on an indictment could come this week. As ABC's Lindsay Watts explains, Trump says criminal charges will not stop his efforts to return to the White House. This morning, the waiting game continues for former President Trump. He predicted he would be arrested last week. But for now, the grand jury investigating hush money paid to porn actress Stormy Daniels continues its work. From the beginning, it's been one witch hunt and phony investigation after another. At the first major rally for his 2024 campaign Saturday, Trump's focus was his legal troubles. He told the crowd in Waco, Texas, that he's probably the most innocent man in the country. The weaponization of our justice system is not, as some have called it, a political spectacle. This is the central issue of our time. Just days ago, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg received a letter with a death threat saying, Alvin, I'm going to kill you, and a white powder later deemed non-hazardous. On social media, Trump warned of potential death and destruction if he's charged. Protests that Trump has called for haven't materialized, but hostile rhetoric has put the courthouse behind metal barriers. It's dangerous, and if he keeps it up, he's going to get someone killed. We've already seen the consequences of incitement from the former president. Trump is also facing several separate investigations, including one into his actions leading up to January 6th. He opened his rally with a video showing images of the insurrection and jailed rioters singing the national anthem. An announcer called them the J6 choir. This morning, dozens of former federal prosecutors are condemning Trump's attacks on D.A. Alvin Bragg. They released a statement calling on people to support and protect prosecutorial independence and the rule of law. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. 509, 69 degrees. Pieces of the computer code used to run Twitter are leaked online. What that means for the social media platform's millions of users. Might just look like regular t-shirts. Up next, find out how these icon t-shirts can help give back to kids fighting cancer. And let's look out there with a live cam. That humidity has returned, but we're gonna be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of today and the rest of your work week. We'll be right back. 
512, it's a story of giving born from necessity. Case had has done many stories on Noah Adams who went through chemo right here in San Antonio. His mom saw some difficulties he had while getting chemotherapy. And as our Courtney Friedman reports, now that he's in remission, she's sending a special homemade products to other kids all over the world. Debbie Harper's job has nothing to do with sewing, but she spends a lot of her time these days at this sewing machine. The reason has to do with her son, Noah, who was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer in 2020 at the age of 17. His cancer is, um, is an ugly one. It's a beast. It's um, called Ewing sarcoma. And he, uh, so they have five years before they're considered survivors. While in that delicate remission, Noah spends his time thinking of others. He started the Stay Strong Foundation to help other kids with cancer. A wing of that charity is called Icon Shirts. Icon standing for In Care of Noah. The idea stemmed from the port in Noah's chest where he used to receive chemo. He had to take off his shirt every single time. He hated it and he hated the hospital gowns because then you have the back opened and he just he didn't like it. Shirts with openings online were just too expensive. So Noah's aunt sewed a zipper onto several of his shirts and he loved it. So for the last year and a half, Harper has been making icon shirts for kids all over the world. We've delivered to Croatia, Australia, everywhere across the United States. Right now, the operation is all her. A lot of the requests come in online through their website and the kids can be more specific about what they want. But the other ones that come in through the hospital because of HIPAA have to be more generic. So sometimes she'll get lists that say things like this girl 4T dress or boy adult small. Sometimes she'll get orders of 100 shirts from the hospital. Out of her house, she cuts and sews away, a skill she did not originally have or I learned the skill with YouTube <laughs> to be able to do this. So they're not perfect. They work and the kids love them. She chooses fun, inspirational prints that bring a little normalcy to the kids' lives. I hate that I have to do the little bitty ones because, I mean, 2T, that's a two-year-old, right? She makes sizes from toddler 2T to triple XL and feels honored to create each one. It's very rewarding and I'm always texting Noah and telling him, hey, I just delivered 50 more to the hospital. She can feel Noah's pride all the way from Pittsburgh, where he's currently in college, proving to other kids they can beat cancer and live out their dreams. Now, Harper also makes icon shirts with zippers down the side for children with other conditions that require feeding tubes. To donate to the cause, all you have to do is get on your phone and text ICON to 53555. You can also go to the Stay Strong Foundation website. And that was Courtney Friedman reporting right now, 515, 69 degrees on your Monday. Popular apps like TikTok, Twitter, Netflix, and even Candy Crush are getting banned. Up next, we're going to tell you which country citizens will soon be very bored. Plus, how Levi's will soon supplement human models with AI-generated ones. I'm your overly competitive brother. Check. Psych. <laughs> and I'm about to steal this game from you. Just like I stole Kelly Carter in high school, huh? You got no game. Dude, that's a foul. And now you're ready to settle a score. Game over. <laughs> and if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, well, you can end up paying for all this yourself. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem. Yeah, like me. Thanks, bro. Take a lap, rookie. Real mature. Allergies don't have to be scary. Defeat allergy headaches fast with new Flonase Headache and Allergy Relief. Two pills relieve allergy headache pain. And the congestion that causes it. Flonase Headache and Allergy Relief. It's all good. How you start your day defines the rest of it. Start it with Philip Sonicare with expertise and with the total confidence that you've done everything for your health. So you know you will always get it right. Phillips. In today's Tech Bytes, parts of Twitter's closely guarded source code were leaked online. That's the fundamental computer code on which the platform runs. It includes security vulnerabilities. Twitter has filed a lawsuit to determine who was behind the breach. More apps are facing government bans, this time in France. French officials are banning apps like TikTok, Twitter, and Candy Crush from government employees' devices. The French government says they may present cybersecurity risks for employees and the administration. And Levi's is increasing its modeling staff with artificial intelligence. The company plans to use AI-generated fashion models in its ads. The AI-generated models vary in body types, ages, and skin tones. Levi's says they will never fully
fully replace their human models. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 520, we had some traffic troubles as soon as we went on the air this morning at 430. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we have. Uh, you know, I have to say, it's been a very busy few mornings here on GMSA, at least out on the roadways. I know Friday, RJ got a little bit of a break, but we're back to some busy roads and unfortunately not a good situation in certain areas of town. Uh, but let's get a wide look at Transguide, give you a look at the rotation there because uh, you can see some of the traffic is moving along in certain of these areas. Ford 10 there at FM 78. Not a bad shot, I would say, but other areas I've noticed that uh, it's obviously getting a little bit busier at this time, which is unusual because it's still very early in the morning. Uh, one of our shots at 35 at San Marcos actually shows a few droplets on the camera. We talked about mist out on the roadways, so just remember to drive safe and keep your drive, uh, keep your focus out on the roads. There have been a few issues, so we're going to first start with this wide look at the map. All right, nothing here is too concerning because it's still plenty of green out there. But as we bring you in, we mentioned this pretty serious crash along I-10 westbound. Those lower levels were closed for a short period of time at Gulebita Road. That's already cleared out, folks, so we're not really worried about that anymore, but make sure that you have your KSAT mobile app downloaded onto your phone and make sure you have those notifications turned on because we did send a push alert out there uh, a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, this is going to be an incident that's going to be something we will track throughout the morning. 37 southbound at Mathis Road. You can see a huge stretch of yellow out there, and that is because an incident has been reported at this time. It does appear it could be a crash, but we have to make sure we watch that area closely. Unfortunately, none of these cameras are going to be able to show us the conditions, but you can see at 281 at Evans, uh, things are moving along just fine. But Mike, we talked about some of that missed out on the roadways. Some some of these trans guide cameras are picking up a little bit of that. Yeah, and that's the operative word. It's just very little, but just enough to make things slippery out there. So it's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the morning. Got a little fog to deal with. Show you that in a moment. First of all, beautiful picture. Ginger Diane's enjoying some of the beautiful blue bonnets out there. Yes, great weather in Bulver. Boy, it's a great looking picture. Look at how beautiful those flowers are, as well as the pup. So thank you very much for that. It looks a little, you can see the sheen on the road over there at 410. Visibility is not bad at the airport at Randolph. Then you go down to Stinson, Port SA, Pleasanton. Got some fog to deal with over around Gonzales primarily in the southeastern half of our area, although there's a little bit of fog there around Hondo as well. Carrizo Springs and Catula are showing up with some, and it will be sticking around for the next couple of hours. Pretty much steady temperatures. Now, we're gonna, we've are gonna, we got a northeasterly wind right now, and that's going to try and pull in slightly drier air around here. Plus, we've got in places that breeze, so that's helping out with any uh, preventing any fog formation this morning, but we'll keep a lot of clouds around here and get up to 76 degrees today at noon. Some sunshine mixed in a very limited though and make it up to 80 so thanks to the cloud cover we are going to be lower than yesterday's 85 degrees because things cleared up very nicely in the afternoon there's those few little sprinkly showers around here or mist just drizzle something like that and then plenty of clouds by midday, a little bit of a break in the action then by later on this afternoon. Then tonight, we're going to start to see maybe a couple of more showers forming up, especially off to the east. The front's going to move on through here. That will touch off a couple of showers and even a thunderstorm or two. Notice how there's not much, and that's going to be the the situation out there kind of on one hand basically and most of that is going to be well off to the east and that's where the threat for anything strong to severe now that that model did have one or two of them out there in the hill country as well which we'll keep an eye on but here's the outlook as far as an isolated strong to severe storm as possible primarily off to the east now as far as the humidity so we're going to try and get a little break in the humidity uh, throughout the late morning hours. Then the humidity comes back up this afternoon. Then the front moves through, dries things out very significantly into tomorrow as well as Wednesday. And then to go into the rest of the week, here's the drop in humidity comes right back up by the end of the week and then right back down with another front that moves on through here. So once again, these roller coasters, as far as the humidity, as far as temperature continues again this week, 76 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy sky high up to 80 so a little bit on the warm side of things and we'll see the humidity enough out there to notice it then the front moves on through a couple of showers and thunderstorms mainly off to the east late tonight and we'll get drier air moving on in here somewhat cooler air 70 tomorrow 67 on Wednesday and we'll start it off at 56 Wednesday being the coolest day, then back up to the upper 70s Thursday and low 80s, lower humidity by the weekend. So overall, with just a couple of exceptions, above normal temperatures again this week, with the exception of Wednesday. And a shower here or there, but not anything really 
Mm. As far as rain is concerned, not yet. April Fools on Saturday and Stephanie's birthday. Saturday. I know. Yes, yes. it's an awesome day. <laughs> April Fools' Day. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mike. 525, 69 degrees. Coming up next, why the U.S. Army is now getting involved in the arrest of Hollywood actor Jonathan Majors that happened this past weekend. 527, a rising movie star was arrested over the weekend, and it's wound up having an indirect effect on the United States Army. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. When you look into your future, do you see a life full of obstacles or possibilities? An obstacle for the U.S. Army's new Be All You Can Be ad campaign featuring Jonathan Majors. The Army paused the campaign after the actor was arrested in what New York police termed a domestic dispute. He faces charges of assault, strangulation and harassment. Majors' attorney says the actor is completely innocent and expects the charges to be dropped soon. The spokesperson for the Army Enterprise Marketing Office said in a statement, while Mr. Majors is innocent until proven guilty, prudence dictates that we pull our ads until the investigation into these allegations is complete. Adele is extending her Las Vegas residency. The added weekends with Adele shows at the Coliseum are due to run June 16th through November 4th. Fans can register now for the ticket presale, which begins Wednesday, April 5th. Tell me more about your foster mother. You like her? Would it make you feel better if you came and stayed with me? Yeah. A Thousand and One is getting strong reviews. Tayana Taylor stars as a woman who kidnaps her six-year-old son from New York's foster care system as both try to figure out who they are. I got a war for you, you know that? A Thousand and One opens in limited release Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now is 529 and 69 degrees for now. Parts of the southern U.S. bracing for more severe weather. That's after that deadly tornado outbreak. Next, where their storms could be going today. Tracking the billions of dollars now being invested into the growth of San Antonio, you have probably seen all the construction downtown. Just ahead, an update on one of the big projects and why it's important to the future of the city. As parts of the U.S. South recover from an aftermath of deadly tornadoes, where forecasters say another route of storms is likely headed later today. And taking a look out there with a live cam, looking at 69 degrees to start this morning. A little humid and a little mist here and there. You can't see too much in this shot. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the 27th of March. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a restful weekend and ready to start the day and, you know, face the humidity. Yeah, it, it won't be humid all that long. It, we're going to kind of do a little up and down somewhat this morning and then drop down going into tomorrow with the front moving through. And that may, talking about uh, strong to severe storms, touch off one or two of them, especially off to the east later on tonight. And by the way, I was just glancing over at one of the TransGuide cameras. 35 San Marcos does have drops on the lens right now. So, yes, we do have some mist drizzle humidity out there roads a little bit shiny there at 410 with some of that uh, that moisture on the ground and uh, temperature stands at 69 degrees so we are anywhere from 10 to 15 above normal on average dew points very high that just continues to get pumped on in here we do have a wind coming in primarily out of the east to northeast right now and that's trying to drop some of the humidity temporarily, but obviously we've got enough out there to give us some fog. Port S.A., Gonzales, Stinson, Pleasanton, not bad at the airport, a lot more down here along the coastal plain. And temperatures, everybody's in the mid upper 60s, couple of low 70s around here. And like I said, dew points are trying to drop down. They will ease a bit later on this morning, come back up this afternoon, and then with the front moving on through, they will be dropping down. So 76 at noon, 80 high temperature today, down from yesterday's high of 85 just because of that extra cloud cover around here. Wind out of the northeast. Then we'll finally get the front moving through. Now that's going to start to touch off a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm this evening, and then most of that is going to be later on tonight. And here's what the Storm Prediction Center has. We're kind of on the, the fringes of this small area of isolated, strong to potentially severe storms, high wind and hail being the biggest threats, and that's just our eastern counties. And this would be, again, late, late tonight. Get just few and far between. Now, in behind this front moving through, not only drier air, but also we are going to cool down midweek.
question is, how long does that last? And what about the first weekend of April? Yeah, April begins Saturday, if you can believe it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, still that big problem out there? No, Mike, but as you pointed out, we do have droplets there at 35 at San Marcos, so some of the mist is out there out on the roadway, so remember to drive safe. Thankfully, traffic's moving along there in that particular area of town without any trouble, but still, the morning is getting a little bit busier minute by minute. We know uh, by 630 in the next hour or so, we're going to see a lot more folks out there, always expected. Uh, but our problems aren't really happening here in town. They're actually taking place right along the south side here, just south of 1604, a little bit closer to Atascosa County, where we have an incident that is causing a buildup of traffic. Earlier, we mentioned that, unfortunately, there are no trans guide cameras in the area, so that still seems to be the case that will be able to show us the conditions, but we can tell you there is a buildup taking place out there. If you are traveling south of 1604 on the south side along 37, you will see that buildup, and we're going to watch it closely, but right now, you do want to look for some alternative routes if you have to travel there through the, the early morning hours. Why look at the metropolitan area? As I mentioned, it's quiet here in town. We did have an issue along I-10 westbound near Culebra Road. That's already cleared out, so it's not too concerning for us anymore and for any drivers that have to head out in the next few minutes. But if you are traveling in, take your time. Again, we know that there's mist out there on the roadways, so that journey from Bernie shouldn't be too bad. It should be about 24 minutes to the downtown area. 26 along 281 southbound if you're traveling in from Bolverde, and about a 25-minute drive time along I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. But again, watch out for that mist out on the roadway, folks. 35 at San Marcos is a shot from Transguide. We're going to continue to watch the roads closely, and there is an update to some road closures. I'll have that information coming up a little bit later on. Mark, Steph. Stephen, thank you, sir. This morning, parts of the southern U.S. are bracing for even more severe weather. The deadly tornado outbreak and strong thunderstorms that swept across Mississippi and Alabama late Friday have claimed the lives of at least 26 people. ABC's Morgan Norwood reports on the search and recovery efforts. This morning, Rolling Fork, Mississippi, maimed and mangled, most of it leveled, after a monster tornado sliced through the city like a chainsaw, cutting a 60-mile path of destruction across the state and killing more than two dozen people. It just hit quickly. Came out of the south, southeast, and uh, by the time it got down on the ground, it got bigger and bigger, as you can see by the path. Tracy Harden owns Chuck's Dairy Bar. She and her husband, along with seven others, survived the splitting winds by taking shelter inside this large cooler. Their restaurant, a total loss, along with a community she says she loves so dearly. Our building doesn't have a roof on it anymore. Um, so that's the moment we knew it was bad. We're praying and we're crying and we're screaming and all of a sudden it just stops. And then there's Jessica Davis, who tells me she was on the phone with her mother, Wanda, when that twister barreled through. She says she could hear the winds in the background. Her mother drove to a local store, hunkered down inside, but never made it out. I'm hurt, nothing but hurt, because everyone lost something. Whether it was a loved one, home, everyone lost something. Jessica Cole Davis's mom was driving. This is her car when that tornado whizzed through. She pulled over here to the parking lot of what used to be the Stoller General. She ran inside, but sadly never made it out. It's really hard. It's just, you know, nothing to come back to. This morning, relief is on the way. Governor Tate Reeves touring the disaster zone with federal officials, including FEMA. And while, yes, there is promise to rebuild, but some in Rolling Fork struggle to see the potential. I'm looking around town and I'm saying, I know we can rebuild, but what you do with the devastation, what you do with all the, I'm glad I'm by myself. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Rolling Fork, Mississippi. The failed Silicon Valley bank is in new hands. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, says First Citizens Bank and Trust, based in North Carolina, has purchased SVB's deposits and loans. Silicon, Silicon Valley Bank branches will reopen this morning under the first Citizens Bank name. SVB was the nation's 16th largest bank when it failed back on March 10th. A devastating car crash in Tennessee kills six children and hurts two adults. The crash happened yesterday on a highway north of Nashville in the central part of the state. State police say the eight people were traveling in a Toyota Camry when it suddenly left the road and flipped over. The six children were thrown from the car and died. A woman in the car was also thrown from the vehicle and is in critical condition. Police say a man suffered minor injuries. 
Some scary moments aboard a Delta Airlines fly about to take off from Los Angeles over the weekend. Authorities say a man as the plane pushed away from the gate Saturday, a passenger on board opened an emergency exit door that caused the emergency slide to open. Airport police quickly responded and they arrested the passenger. Police say he's now undergoing a mental evaluation. No one was hurt in the incident. That flight was headed to Seattle. Delta helped passengers get booked on other flights. Time now, 540 and 69 degrees for now. San Antonio is on the rise, literally and metaphorically. Next, we'll tell you about the ultimate goal for a special construction project in the downtown area. Let's look out there with live cams. So in this shot, you can't tell, but I'm looking at another trans guide shot over at I-35 of San Marcos. We can see a little bit of rain drops on the lens. Uh, so a little mist here and there. We're going to be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect today. We'll be right back. 543, welcome back on your Monday morning. If you've been around downtown recently, you noticed the construction. San Antonio continues to grow, and a big part of that growth is Centro San Antonio. An economic development director for the organization joined us on Leading SA to talk about the way it's tracking the billions of dollars in investment in our city and why it's so important. Yes, through these billions of dollars and the dozens and dozens of projects, there's so much happening in and around the downtown part of San Antonio. So obviously, we talked about the big projects on the rise, and we talked about why it is so important to get more people living, working, and playing in downtown San Antonio. Here's a bit of our conversation. We're finally seeing kind of the, the fruits of our efforts and um, the kind of the bigger projects downtown, if you think about Hemisphere, that's a game changer. If you think about the Alamo, I mean, the state is involved and it's going to be wrapping up right around 2026. If you kind of move a little bit further west, UTSA is making a huge investment in our downtown. If you move a little further north, Broadway Corridor, we're still seeing improvements along uh, the museum reach and kind of river north connecting sort of the, the pearl and the downtown core to together and you kind of start starting to see these kind of things kind of come about on the south lone star has been kind of slow to start but once that goes that'll pull a lot of investment south but there's just there's a lot there are a lot of really great projects out there and even if you're looking a little bit further east past the highway velocity texas trtf the innovation district we also talked about why this database is so important for people around our community keeping people interested and keeping them informed about what is coming to the Alamo City. You can check out the full discussion right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thanks, Max. Time now, 544 and 68 degrees for now. Location, location, location. It really depends on where you're at in town this morning. Roads are dry in some spots, damp in others and downright wet in other spots as well. There's 37 at US 181. We'll check out some of the other road conditions with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Now, just about 548. Let's go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos who started off busy this morning. You know, uh, it's unfortunate, you know, when we have issues that pop up on the roadways, as always, we hope everyone is doing OK out there. But uh, the situation along 37 is not looking good. Now, while this shot at Transguide is not showing anything but droplets, be on the lookout if you're traveling in the southbound lanes. Unfortunately, this is the closest camera shot that we're able to get from Transguide along 37 southbound. And that's where we have that incident that's been reported there as you approach Mathis Road. Notice that big stretch of red that is building out there. Uh, not a good situation right now. We are working to get some details. Katrina Weber actually drove by that area earlier in the morning, but unfortunately the scene was just a little bit too risky for her to uh, step out of the vehicle and get some uh, the video shots. So we have to make sure we're driving carefully out there. It's very dark. She did mention that it was also wet out there, so use some caution. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area, not a lot else out there, guys. It's been very quiet, but finally we received an update from TxDOT regarding some of the upcoming closures that are taking place, and some of it's happening this week. Later today, actually, this morning around 9 o'clock, you will see some road repairs along US 90 on the far west side of San Antonio. This will take us all the way to the end of the month, Friday, March 31st. Now, what we'll see out there is a single eastbound lane closure from FM 471 to Metzler Lane. So always plan your commute ahead of time. I have updated the list of closures on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. You can scroll over there and find a full list. But um, unfortunately, it does look like this may be the best shot that we're going to get right now along 37, but you can see some of those droplets. Again, Katrina drove out there very dark, so you know uh, it's a little bit too risky to step out and again get uh, details on that story, but it just shows you I uh, got to drive careful out there.
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we might not have to worry about heavy rain, but just like little rain here and there. Yeah, it's back to it. Now, tonight there's going to be a chance for a couple of showers and storms, mainly off to the east. There's be one or two of them. It's not going to be a huge event. It's going to be almost like what happened last Thursday night, where it was very few and far between. A lot didn't even materialize. First of all, out there and a nice view from Spring Branch, as you can see, the beautiful Texas flag flying on their back deck. No, no, look at all those blue bonnets out there. That's just gorgeous. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, out there at the airport, obviously nothing is showing up on the camera lens, but road appears to be somewhat on the damp side. A lot of this mist, even though there's some drops on some of those transguide cameras, it was so very fine on my windshield this morning. Didn't even have to use the wipers. Now, that may be the situation where you are. It may be in the form of just regular old mist. All right, New Braunfels, 10 miles visibility. Randolph, same thing, Port SA, or excuse me, San Antonio. Antonio Airport, pretty good. And then you get down the south side, a little bit more fog around Pleasanton, over there around Gonzales. This is actually thickened up somewhat. Thicker fog on the coastal plain, a little bit around Hondo, Cotula, Carrizo Springs this morning. But then look at temperatures. Now there's not much of a difference from the hill country in toward the metropolitan area, mid upper 60s, but dew points are much lower out there. Kerrville Comfort, Canyon Lake in the uh, 40s and 50s. Some of that dry air is going to try and scooch in here later on this morning temporarily and then the humidity comes back up later on this afternoon. So first of all, it's cloudy skies, 10% a little bit of mist and drizzle out there, some patchy fog this morning. Mid 70s today at noon and then high temperature today up to 80 and we'll start to see maybe a couple of more showers developing late this afternoon, especially uh, out to the uh, the west. Now here's the few little scattered sprinkles mist drizzle out there this morning and then some sunshine this afternoon kind of thrown on in here. Now we go into tonight. Here's the few little showers that are going to be developing. Most of this is going to be off to the east. Anything potentially strong. This particular model though also has couple of those spots out there in northwest portions of the hill country early tomorrow morning. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that as well. But then once we get into the afternoon or late morning hours, all this is going to be moving on out. And I think we see some sunshine, but then another shot at some rain then tomorrow night. So we'll still have these rain chances kind of off and on here and there throughout the almost every day this week. There's the outlook for an isolated, strong to potentially severe storm, basically well off to the east later on tonight. Humidity. We get a little bit of a drop, then it comes back up this afternoon, then it really drops down with the front moving on through here, and that dry air continues to pump on in. Now, as far as temperatures this week, very warm today, not as warm as yesterday. Then we drop down tomorrow as well as Wednesday, and actually a couple of days below normal, back to where we should be Thursday, and then on the warmer side, the end of the week, however, we do have a front moving on through here, so that's going to actually drop the humidity down somewhat, especially going into the weekend as well as the first part of next week. So forecast goes like this. And by the way, April is going to be starting off very, very beautiful this upcoming weekend. <clears throat> Excuse me, 76 degrees at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 80, so we will be somewhat on the warm side not as warm as yesterday. Then the front moves on through here. It'll touch off a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, anything strong, potentially severe, mainly off to the east. Then we get into tomorrow and we'll be at 70, 67 on Wednesday. So a couple of cool days back up to the upper 70s, low 80s. And that next front, which not going to do too much coming on through here is going to pull down some drier air. We do have just that 20% chance little, you know, shower here and there almost every day this week, and it's also going to be windy tomorrow. Ah, oh, windy tomorrow. Yeah. We'll prepare for that. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Time right now, 553, 68 degrees. Go ahead and look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, 034, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 6602, Fireball 3. Gosh, five numbers, 15, 17, 31, 32, 33. Lotto Texas, 4, 29, 35, 41, 49, 52. And Powerball, 15, 17, 18, 47, 57, Powerball, 19, Power Play, 2. Good luck. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, and all of the south where 27 reported tornadoes ripped through five states. We've got teams all over from Georgia back here to Mississippi, the latest on the dozens dead and the threat yet today. 
a lot of tornadoes and more where that came from by the end of the week. I'll be tracking the forecast. On top of that, the American couple missing in Haiti reportedly kidnapped and being held for ransom. We're going to hear from their family and an exclusive with Whitney Houston's family on her new gospel album that they released. That and the singer's legacy. You don't want to miss any of it coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in our next hour at GMSA, a third of San Antonians are pre-diabetic. We'll hear from experts at UT Health San Antonio about why some people in the Alamo City are particularly at risk. And we're shining a spotlight on legendary Olympian Allison Felix, how she's making history off the track. And up next, Ticketmaster going to court as the entertainment giant deals with multiple lawsuits. Why fraud is just one of the many allegations. And traffic could be tricky again this morning due to mist and drizzle that is affecting the roads. We've been tracking that since we went on the air this morning. Stephen Cavazos will have much more coming up in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio.